Okay, good afternoon and welcome to the Computer Security Seminar from Purdue University. Our speaker for this last week of the semester is Yelena Mirkovich from University of Delaware. Her topic is a practical IP spoofing defense through uh, route-based filtering. <laughs> Thank um, you. Thank you for coming on such a cold day for the last seminar of the semester. That's, I'm really honored that you know, so many people came. Um, I will talk to you today about uh, defense against IP spoofing. It's called Clouseau, and Clouseau is really just a protocol that we use to build tables that are then used by route-based filtering to detect and filter out spoofed traffic. And this is joint work between University of Delaware, Google, and uh, UCLA. So this is the overview of my talk. I will just briefly remind you what IP spoofing is. I bet all of you know that, but I'll just go over that briefly. And then I'll talk a bit about route-based filtering, which is one defense that has been proposed against IP spoofing. And the way route-based filtering works is that we would have this notion of what is a expected path between any source and any destination. And then routers somewhere in the core of the internet would have tables denoting those paths between any possible source and any possible destination. And they would use this knowledge to detect packets coming on a path that is unexpected given their source address. And then those packets would be considered spoofed and filtered. Uh, there has been prior work in route-based filtering. Uh, Ki Hong Park for, from Purdue actually did this work. And they, uh, he looked at. Um, how effective this would be if you deployed it at a few points on the internet. And um, he came up with the result that if you deploy it at 18% of the, um, all the ASs in the internet, it would be very, very effective. It would be 99, 98, 99% effective. Uh, we looked at a slightly different question uh, because it, even 19% even of all the ASs in the internet is a pretty large number. It's about 3,000, more than 3,000 ASs. So we wondered what would happen if you only had five points to deploy this on, or maybe 10 or 20, or at most 50. Could you be effective? And it turns out that you could be around 95% effective even if you had 50 points to deploy this on. We also looked at how complete should tables be. What if we have tables that are partially complete? And it turns out that if we have partially complete tables, our effectiveness goes sharply down. So what we really want is to have tables that are 100% complete. What this means is that we somehow have to um, find out proper information to build these tables. And when route change occurs, you see when the route change occurs, it will be a problem for us because our tables will tell one thing and the, and the packets will be actually coming on a different path. So at this point, we have to infer that the route change has occurred and to update our tables. Clouseau protocol does that. So when, when we have unexpected packets coming um, on an interface that is not the proper interface for the source address, Clouseau protocol will kick in and it will um, basically um, do some decision making uh, to figure out whether there has been a route change or whether these are spoofed packets. Uh, we will also set spoofed packet filters once we reach our decision and we are pretty sure that there is spoofing going on. We will start filtering packets that are offen offending. Um, and Clouseau can uh, act, it's pretty accurate in all our tests and it acts pretty quickly, so within uh, half of the second, we can reach a decision whether there was a route change or spoofing. So there are basically three parts of my talk. The first part is IP spoofing, and I'll go quickly over this. Um, IP spoofing occurs when someone puts a fake uh, source IP in the IP header and then sends the packet along. In this example, Andy, uh, which has a address 5678 is uh, faking Leah's address 1234 in a packet going to Danny. So why is IP spoofing bad? Well, first in my example, if um, Andy was sending malicious packets to Danny, such as for instance packets containing virus, then first Andy would avoid liability by putting fake source address in the IP header. We wouldn't know where packets are coming from. And also, Andy could uh, make Leah responsible for this traffic because if we look at the uh, 
source IP information, we would conclude that this was sent by Leah. So we, the attacker transfers liability to another person. Uh, the um, other misuse of IP spoofing is for reflector denial of service attacks. These attacks occur when um, the attacker sends a lot of requests, faking victim's address. For instance, DNS service requests, it's, it's the attacker sends them to a lot of servers, and then servers all reply back to the victim. And this traffic overwhelms the victim uh, and pro, uh, invokes denial of service effect. Uh, when trying to deal with such attacks, it's not enough to just filter out offending traffic because offending traffic is coming from legitimate servers and it is legitimate traffic. So we would be effectively denying service to our users if we filter this traffic out. On the other hand, servers, they have no idea that these are bad requests, that these are fake requests. So they, they appear as legitimate requests to those servers. If we could handle spoofing, if we could reduce amount of spoofing, we would essentially handle reflector DDoS attacks. Spoofing is also misused in regular denial of service attacks when the attacker just sends a lot of traffic to the victim and then spoofing really makes defenses hard because if spoofing was not possible, what we would see when we collected statistics um, on the traffic coming into our network, being a victim's network, we would see a lot of legitimate users sending a little bit, and then we would see the attacker sending a whole lot, and then we would filter out this attack traffic. With IP spoofing, what we see is a lot of seemingly legitimate users sending a little bit, and we are still swamped, and we don't know what to filter. And so this is a common problem, not only with DDoS defenses, but a lot of other defenses for other security threats, they build profiles per user, and they try to distinguish what's, who's a good user, who's a bad user, and user usually means an IP address, source IP address of the packets. So with IP spoofing, all those profiles are, are useless because someone can either take over my profile or make me look bad by faking my IP address. So if IP spoofing were reduced, what we would get is we would simplify a lot of defenses we would also get rid of reflector attacks or severely reduced reflector attacks. We would severely reduce uh, the amount of damage from denial of service attacks because if the attacker was randomly spoofing, only a small percentage of the attack would reach the victim, so that, that would be good. Um, and the attacks would be easier to detect and attribute because with limited spoofing, there would be only a few places we would go where to locate the attacker. So route-based filtering is one of the proposed defenses against IP spoofing. There are a few more, and I'm, I'm going to wait until the end of the talk. If there is time, I will give you over your related work. If there's no time, then uh, it's there on the slides, but, but then I'll skip it. Uh, route-based filtering uh, works by building tables that tell the filtering router what is the expected previous hop for every source address. So the router in this picture would remember that the uh, top, top green uh, rectangle is the expected hop for uh, traffic coming from Andy, and then traffic coming from Leah should come on the bottom path. And then based on this table, we would do filtering, and we would be able to filter packets that come on unexpected path. The Kihon Park's work looked at the effectiveness of this filtering, and the reference is right there at the bottom. Uh, Route-based filtering should be very effective. There are some remaining problems, such as what, what should we do when the route changes, because then tables should change, and that's a big problem that we are addressing with Clouseau work. And then the other thing is that some spoofing will still be possible. Depending where you do filtering, you will detect some spoof packets, but you will not detect all of them unless you do filtering everywhere in the Internet. So here is the example of how route-based filtering would work. Let's say that uh, my interfaces are numbered one and two, and I'm remembering that traffic from Andy should come on interface.